channel, you're watching The Brown Feminist. Over the past few months, I have been getting some questions quite frequently from all of you. And one of them was, what kind of degrees and certifications or academic qualifications are needed in order for you to enter and build a career in clinical research? So today we're going to be talking about exactly what degrees and certifications are mandatory, which ones are optional, and which ones can actually have added value or benefit for you to either enter the industry or prosper in it. So without further ado, let's get started. So first and foremost, let's talk about the basic entry requirements of any full-time position in clinical research. So nowadays, 99% of the roles which are in clinical research, whether as an assistant, associate, coordinator, will require a bachelor's degree. And more often than not, they prefer that that bachelor's degree allow you to gain experience in working with humans, in working with other human patients or human subjects, have some kind of courses in clinical research or just research with human populations. But that bachelor's degree itself can be in a variety of fields. So there is no limitation that you need to have a bachelor's degree in health sciences or a bachelor's degree in nursing or in psychology. However, because these programs in the undergraduate level do expose you to working with patients or working with humans, dealing with sensitive confidential health data, these kind of things. So these kind of degrees are definitely more desirable when it comes to having your basic minimum entry level requirements into the industry for clinical research. Number two, if you want to get a clinical professional degree, whether it is in nursing, medicine, physiotherapy, kinesiology, something else like that, which maybe gives you a license to work with patients. That is not a minimum requirement for entering clinical research, but it is a big bonus. Nurses are very desired candidates in the world of clinical research. I have worked with a lot of people with either like a PT, physiotherapy license, somebody who did their schooling in psychology, psychotherapy, um, and various other kinds of like clinical degrees or professional degrees like that. So while they are not mandatory many of the times, having this is an additional bonus if you're working in clinical research. But there are other ways to kind of manage those experiences without needing these degrees for sure. But if you are determined from a very young stage in your career that you want to go into clinical research, you want to work on drug trials, you want to work with human subjects in a research setting, then it's not a bad idea to go for a base clinical degree. Now let's assume that you have an undergraduate degree, but it is not in a field which has prepared you to work with human subjects. It's not necessarily in a clinical or health science field. It didn't give you a lot of exposure to those areas of experience that you need, like research ethics or human subjects and things like that. That is not necessarily the end of the story if you want to and are very passionate about clinical research. In those cases where your base degree or your undergraduate degree or whatever your academic training and background is at the undergraduate or graduate level, in cases where they are significantly different from the needs of the clinical position you are applying to, you can do a certification. There are courses available when you're kind of trying to change your field to maybe from basic science or from policy or something else and you're trying to go towards clinical research. You can do maybe a secondary graduate degree. Um, you can do a graduate certificate course. The certificate courses can span like six months up to a year. The graduate degrees are typically a year or two years long in Canada. And those degrees and certifications can be specifically titled and focused on clinical research skills and experiences. If you can get something with co-op or hands-on experience and internship opportunities built into the program, that's also another excellent way 
of learning and making up for the fact that your original degrees were not in like a human health facing role or did not expose you to like research with human subjects as much. So these are excellent tools for people who don't have maybe a bachelor's in health sciences or nursing or um, other biomedical stuff or clinical things. Um, but in general, if you do already have a background in these things, the certifications or secondary degrees may not be necessary and you can just keep gaining more experience to climb up the ladder up till a certain point. So for number four, we will focus on what kind of certifications or licensures will actually help you progress in a career in clinical research. Now this is a, can, be, can have a variety of different options. So one excellent thing to do is to be certified as a clinical research professional. So this is called a CCRP and it can be offered by different kind of um, examination bodies or agencies. Um, one of the recognized one is SOCRA, S-O-C-R-A, you can look that up. Um, and they only give it to people in order to even take their exam to become certified, you would need to meet a bunch of criteria. For example, X number of um, years of experience in a clinical facing role and so on. So that that's one example of the kind of certification you can do. The other thing you can do is you can maintain or achieve a clinical license. For example, if you are in nursing, having like a registered nurse's license, a nurse practitioner's license, add a lot of value for you um, in your profession and professional development and growth in clinical research. The other thing you can do is if you definitely are sure that you want to be in clinical research and one day you want to lead your own kind of research projects as an investigator, not just as a research coordinator or a project manager, but you want to be the one to come up with the research project ideas, to apply for the grants, to design the science behind the research projects, then excellent ideas is to go to graduate school, get a master's, get a PhD, um, get some kind of like terminal like degree in your field. It can be an MD, it can be like an NP, nurse practitioners program. So you can be like a clinical epidemiologist or um, an investigator in a hospital research institute as a nurse practitioner or a physician um, or something else. So these kind of degrees are like a lot more like advanced and they really allow you to kind of keep building on your clinical research career, but more from an investigator, a PI kind of from an angle like that. And in those cases, your responsibilities as you keep going up will be less hands-on with patients in the long run and will be more about thinking of the design of the projects, how to implement them, who to collaborate with, which kind of data and variables to look at, analyzing them, publishing them, identifying the knowledge gaps that exist um, and which ones deserve to be investigated and things like that. Number five is the need for no further degree than what you have now. So this is basically if you want to stay in a more hands-on approach in clinical research, you can still go further in your career, um, but it would be in a different way and it would need less academic training. So for example, if you enjoy more day-to-day -day patient interaction and you want to stick with that in the long run of your career, you would need to focus more on hands-on workplace experience and trainings. And for that, your entry level or at most a master's degree should be more than sufficient to set you up to enter the industry. And then you would keep going up. So maybe clinical research, research assistant, one, two, three, research associate, clinical research coordinator, one, two, clinical research project manager, um, and so on, like overall research institute project manager. Um, and then you can go up to that point and that is also like an excellent career path to take, but that is like the more technical hands-on side of things. Whereas if you chose to kind of go back for like a master's PhD or a terminal degree in clinical work, then that would be more um, leading you to the path of becoming a PI or an investigator and kind of designing your projects and coming up with projects and funding. So these are like the more broader two branches and they do have like different kind of requirements in terms of your degrees and qualifications. 
So that was all for today. I really hope I've been able to answer this very common question that you were all asking me both in the comments and in emails. And I will do more videos if you would like. So please let me know in the comments down below what other questions you have or if you want more guidance about how to kind of pick the programs that you go for at the graduate level or the graduate certification level or even at the undergraduate level. Um, if you need a little bit more detailed guidance on that or tips and advice, I would be more than happy to make a video. If you enjoyed the content, please do give me a thumbs up. It's a huge encouragement for me to keep making videos. And if you haven't done so at all, already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that's all for today this is the brown feminist have a wonderful week